I'm Martha Higdon and I'm going to show you how I'm quilting this Granny Garden Sew by Lori Holt. Um, fabrics for Riley Blake. I just want to show you um, I had the quilt brought in by a, a great customer and Donna McElwain who does an excellent job at piecing and then she asked me to quilt it for her, and I'm so humbled and honored. So um, I know she likes to enter these into quilts uh, shows so I got to do a few, a few things extra. Um, first I'm going to outline my uh, I'm not so much in the ditch on this one. I'm just outlining one. I'm stabilizing it. So I'm going to use a straight line. So any straight line edge ruler. Um, I just happen to be using my handy quilter skinny ruler. So I just did the outside outside of my outlines. I'm outlining it in. And then um, she added actually a couple more extra blocks, um, borders, I'm sorry, extra borders than I think is normal. Um, but I'm not for sure. It's larger than what I've seen. So this um, it's a grunge in this uh, clear colored border. Um, I'm doing feathers in it as well. Again, you're not able to see the feathers. Um, I am using a 40 weight. I am using Glide. Let me look at it here. Glide 40 weight and it's called linen. So that's what I'm using on the top and I'm using an Omni 40 weight um, on the bobbin in the white thread. Um, only because that's what I started with. Hindsight, I probably would have used a thinner thread, 50 or 60 weight, um, but it's going to be beautiful. Um, just a little bit about the thread. 40 weight, you're going to see the quilting more than you would a 50 weight, but a 50 weight would hide a lot of the back tracking. So I'm also using, so I did um, straight lines to um, outline my area. And then I'm going to start with this handy gadget Wave C as in Charles, C, wave C, you notice that I have painter's tape um, on my ruler. And so what I'm doing is when I line it up, I'm lining it up for that painter's tape. So I'm gonna do, uh, I'll show you how I'm gonna do my feathers. I'm gonna need, you know, down, needle up. I pull my bobbin thread to the top. And then I am in uh, free motion, regulated mode, and I am in precision. I'm at 10 stitches per inch. I'm going to do a locking stitch to lock um, the thread in. I have my lights turned off because it's quite the glare with the video. I am on my handy quilter Forte and I'm in clear view. I have a ruler base on. I have my sure foot, which is a higher shank so that my ruler, which is quarter inch thick, and I place it right up there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my painter's tape with the outside line. And I'm going to make my first section down. And since I have just a little bit more, I'm going to go ahead and finish up until that piecing at the bottom. And now I'm going to do free motion feathers. So I'm going to trim that threads that I had back there. I don't want it to get in my way. When I come back up for the feathers, again, it's free motion. So I'm gonna move it into cruise and I'm at 325 speed. Now I'm just gonna do some feathering. Free motion all the way out to the outside. This time I'm putting a vein inside. Swinging out, vein inside. Swinging out, vein inside. Now I'm gonna do a question mark or a swirl. Bring it back. And then I'm gonna do an outside and around. Now I'm gonna go back to my Swirls and inside. I did a backtrack on that one. And then back. They're not gonna be perfect. They're not gonna be the same. I'm just putting some feathers down. So out and around with a vein inside. I'm getting close to my other one, so I wanna make sure they go together. Up and vein. Here I'm gonna have to do a tie-off. I do a tie-off. Cut my threads. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to the other side of the feathers. I'm gonna start at the top. Needle up, needle down. Gonna do my locking stitch. This time I'm gonna line up my painter's tape so that I'm on the outside. So I'm gonna have an open vein and then I'm gonna have feathers on both sides. Cause it was kind of big. I wanted that openness area. And I just come down the ruler all the way to the end, come down to the piece line. I'm done with the ruler. I'm still in um, regulated 
cruise mode 325 again i'm going out and around and in 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 now i'm not trying to do a lot of backtracking um, because i have a heavier weight thread um, so i'm just trying to you know make the make the feathers flow and fill my whole block area this time i'll go up and do a swirl come back around and come up and do another plume and then up and around and in 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 and then i'm going to do another swirl just because of the way it looked there I wasn't going to be able to fit another plume in there I get it done, I lift it up, and you notice in cruise mode, it takes a couple extra stitches. So it kind of does the locking stitch for me. Trim my threads. Okay, now that's how I did the inner border. The outer border is gonna have a pro stitcher design. Um, but again, with the fabrics, you're not gonna see the design. Um, same thing here, you can kind of see the feathers, um, but it's not as much as you normally would. So. Thought about using a colored thread, but I thought maybe that was a little too bold. All right, and then now I'm using um, the handy gadget. It's called the Peace Out Ruler. You notice this edge here. So what I really liked about it is it was perfect, the same shape as my scallops. You have to remember that the needle is a quarter inch away from that ruler. Um, you notice I don't have any grips on the back, the handy grips on the back just yet. Um, I just probably hadn't put any on there yet, but I'm at the bottom of the quilt. I probably should have had them on by then. Same thing, I'm gonna do needle down, needle up. I'm gonna do my locking stitch. Okay, now I'm gonna use my ruler here, and then I'm using um, the ruler to hold, and then it's gonna be a quarter inch away. I'm gonna go back to my precision mode. I like to use precision when I'm in, I go back and forth, but this time I'm gonna use my precision mode. And when you're working with rulers, it's nice and slow. I move the ruler over, and this time I'm just going the outside of each scallop. I move my ruler, and it just happens to be the perfect size, the Handy Quilter Peace Out Ruler. Just happened to be the perfect size right there for that scallop. And I'm going to go all the way across the quilt until I get to the end. And then I'm going to put a second one. And I'm going to come back on the second one. And this time I'm going to, or line, there's a line on the ruler right here. And I'm going to line up that ruler um, with where the scallop meets. And so that gives me a quarter inch on top of that first scallop. Let's see, no, I didn't get to precision mode. There we go, now we're in precision mode. I line up that scallop um, with that line and that gives me about a quarter inch away from the first line. Hopefully you can see that. I know my hands are coming across the, go across and stop, reposition the ruler and then finish up. And that's how I did the scallops all the way across. I'm gonna do my tie off pulling the bobbin thread to the top and trimming my threads. All right, so I did that all the way across. I haven't decided yet on the corners. Um, this is still a work in progress. So on these larger squares that I had between, I have the applique blocks, I have the scallops, and then I had the large blocks, an inner border, which I don't think I'm gonna put any quilting in. I got it on the outside of both, and then this is gonna have feathers. So in the large squares here, and sometimes that's probably the hardest part is how do I quilt something? And it's, you just have to take it and do each section and then go from there. So this time I've decided to use the handy gadget, the Wave A, A as an apple, uh, wave ruler. Notice again, I've got blue painter's tape on my rulers. The reason why I chose this, it just happened to fit within the block. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a wave on top and then I'm going to flip it and make a wave on the bottom. 
So what I did is I put painter's tape on the line, which so I'm doing each block one at a time. Then I'm using, um, I don't know what this is, a one inch ruler. And I was just marking it here so that I'm one inch from my scallop and lined up on both sides. So once I got that into place, I came over here, needle down, needle up, and it shifted just a little bit. I'm gonna have to move it back. And I didn't tie off correctly. So I'll have to check my bobbin here. Oh, I'm completely out of bobbin. It doesn't take long when you have a 40 weight bobbin in the bobbin area. So if I was to do this over again, I would definitely use a 50, 60, 70 weight in the bobbin because it'll last so much longer than a 40 weight. So if you have a handy quilter, you have your own bobbin winder. And if you don't, you can do pre-rounds. More I thought about this, pre-rounds would have been great. It would have been faster. All right, so now I will put a new bobbin in there for you. We'll finish up the ruler work. There's still gonna be more. I've gotta lay the foundation and then I will show you on preview paper how it's gonna look. So needle up, needle down. I'm gonna bring the bobbin thread to the top like always. I go back, I do my locking stitch. And it locks, should have held onto my threads. Now I'm gonna line it up again. I'm gonna line up that painter's tape to both sides. And I've got my inch that's come from the scallops. It just works for me and that's how I did it. And then so I go on top the ruler. and I make my scallop. And then I'm gonna move on over. I'm gonna go all the way across. Line up my painter's tape, and I have my one inch to make sure that I'm straight across. Line it up. And stop, move it over. Line up those painter's tape. Double check with your one inch that you're one inch from the scallops. Again, lining it up, one inch from the scallops. And I'm gonna put some free motion design in there. I just haven't got that far yet. So right now I'm just laying the skeleton down like I did with my feathers. I use the ruler to put the vine in. This is, I normally would not take a quilt off and turn it, um, but I'm thinking on this quilt, I am probably gonna do that on my side borders. Haven't got that far yet, but it's leaning more towards that way. So I line it up, and this is my last one on this side. I do my locking stitch, or I can use my locking stitch, and it locked it into place. I now go needle up, I pull my thread down, I then come back, I bring the bobbin thread to the top with needle up, needle down, and I cut my threads. I like to work from left to right, so I'll go back to the left side. When we went across the first time, I had my ruler in the up position. And then this time I'm gonna have the ruler in the um, down position. So on this case, I'm still using the painter's tape on both sides because it equally spaced it in that block. And this time I'm gonna have my one inch um, block on the bottom. I'm gonna line it up. See my one inch is right there on the piecing and then it's at the very top. My blues painters tapes on both sides. And I go back to the side over here. Same thing, needle down, needle up. Bring the bobbin thread to the top. I do my locking stitch holding onto my threads it locks it into place. Now I line up my rulers, got my one inch, now I'm ready to go to the bottom side. I stop, and you notice when I'm doing rulers, I'm in the needle down position, so that when it stops, the needle stays down, and then I can reposition um, this um, 
ruler. Again, this is the wave A. And then I'm gonna line it up, the blue painter's tape on both sides. I'm gonna use my one inch. And it's just how it worked out. And I come back around. Not for sure if you can see the design, but I have a, a round, it comes in and round and comes back in. Then I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna fill it with some filler designs. I just haven't decided what yet. So I line up that painter's tape. I bring in that ruler, so I'm at least keeping it straight. Again, um, I got my um, sure foot on, I got a ruler base on, and I have a ruler that's at least a quarter inch thick. I'm applying pressure to the ruler and holding it down so it stays nice and straight. I go around and I come back to this edge. And I go all the way across, again, moving that ruler. Painter's tape is great because you can take the paint, the tape right back off when I'm finished. Again, I line it up, come back across. I would love to say that I did all the pre-planning beforehand, but some, it just doesn't work. Sometimes I just start quilting and then beautiful designs come out of it. So again, I line it up. There, I move the template one more time. I'm lining up those and I make sure I've got a one inch and then I come over here, come back around, and I finish. Again, I'm gonna do the tie off, needle up, pull the, th the thread down, move it away, bring the bobbin thread to the top, and trim both of the threads, the bobbin and the bottom, okay? So here, I just use a basic straight edge to outline to secure the, the quilt in place. I've used the Wave A. Again, I have this beautiful design. And then I'll go in and I'll have to fill it with something. I haven't decided how much quilting that I'm gonna need. Um, and it's more than likely it's gonna be some free motion. And then I use the Wave C to put the spine in for my feathers. And I had an open feather, so I had about a quarter inch that's inside the feather. And I use the piece out ruler that fit perfectly around each of the scallops. Again, I love working with rulers. Again, you have to have the right equipment, the ruler base, the higher shank sure foot, and some rulers. And then just start um, designing and working your way through the rulers. Again, I'm mostly in precision mode. Um, when I'm working, I'm in a regulated, I'm usually in precision mode. If I'm in a cruise, I'm gonna lower my, um, my percentage. Like right now I'm at 325 when I was doing feathers, but if I was using rulers with cruise, cruise mode, I'd lower it down to like 75 to 50. Um, so I do like the cruise mode because it locks in the stitches because it keeps cruising at the very end. When working with rulers, I'm in the needle down position so that the needle stays down. When I reposition the ruler, that way the needle and the thread doesn't get lost anywhere on the quilt, it stays down in the quilt. Um, so this has been a very fun quilt. Um, it's um, a still a work in progress. So hopefully I'll have another video to show you how I finished inside the wave and how I finished the outer borders. Uh, but I hope this gives you some ideas of how to quilt um, this beautiful quilt um, by Lori Holt. Um, it is gorgeous, um, but I can see where a lot of people may say, well, I don't know how to quilt that. Um, so I tell people just do one block at a time and then build off of that block and, and then enjoy the process. Um, this is a lot of fun to do some quilting with. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're gaining some information from it. Um, please like my YouTube channel. Um, my Facebook page is Around the Vine Quilting Studio. Uh, my website is quiltingbymartha.com. I'm also a handy quilter educator, so I'm out traveling the world um, teaching. So look for me at one of your quilt shows or quilt stores. So happy quilting.